Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, just a quick heads up before we move on. I am a little bit under the weather, but I am on the mend. The show must go on. Let's talk all the like performance numbers. That's the first stuff we want to get stuck in with you guys. They have shed some additional light on the performance of the architecture featured on old like CPUs. And you'll be relieved, rejoiced, celebrating on the rooftops to hear that this is not a rumor or a leak. No salt TM is required. This was thanks to their slides that they presented at their Hot Chip Status 3 conference. So basically, they shed some light on the performance of the P core and E core parts that basically make up Older Lake. And just to refresh your memory, P core is Golden Cove and E core is Gracemont. So we can see the relative single threaded and multi threaded performance comparison between the two cores that we see featured on Older Lake. So just further. Sort of really nice look at the performance of Older Lake in comparison, well, to itself. <laughs> so, in single threaded applications, a single golden core, P core, delivers a 50% single threaded performance over a single E core grace mount within the same die area and power package. However, when we come to a hybrid design, we see it just storms ahead in multi threaded and delivers a 50% increase compared to a 4 P core solution. And Intel have actually delivered a helpful slide here, which helps demonstrate what I'm trying to say. So the hybrid design that it was pitted against featured two P cores, Golden Cove again, and eight E cores, or Gracemont, and offers 50% more threads to obtain its 50% lead over a standard four P core design, which is 12 threads versus eight threads. But again, this is all done within the same package and power constraints. So the TLDR of all of what I just said is that Golden Cove delivers a 50% higher single threaded and the hybrid design features 50% higher multi-threaded performance. So here's where you can start to tick over the very interesting possibilities with the performance of Older Lake. I am really interested to see how Older Lake actually performs in, you know, real world tests such as gaming and workloads, you know, professional work, let's say you're editing or you're doing some 3D rendering or whatever, you know, perhaps you're just drawing memes and paint for all I know. The point is that I'm really curious to see exactly how Older Lake is going to perform. I think it's a really interesting technology and obviously a huge pivot for Intel. So I'm looking forward to seeing Older Lake finally released onto the market. And obviously it's great to finally see some real deep dives into exactly what is going on underneath the hood. But we're going to move on from Intel now over to their arch nemesis AMD. We have some cool news for Zen 4 up next. And this is yet more info which has been mined from the Gigabyte leak. Which, whoo, well, that was a doozy as I'm sure you'd agree. We got a ton of great information about Threadripper and a bunch of other stuff that we've been curious about. But the information hasn't dried up yet. We have more insight into Zen 4. And apparently upcoming Zen 4 architecture based Ryzen processors will all offer integrated GPUs by design. Now I just want to clarify that this does not mean that all of the Ryzen Zen 4 processors are going to have the iGPUs enabled. However, we are going to be seeing mainstream Zen 4 silicon actually be paired with graphics for the first time. We will not see that be exclusive to say APUs. We're going to be seeing iGPUs a possibility for mainstream Zen 4 chips. The document also does say that some OPNs may not support GFX, so we will obviously see some Ryzen CPUs with the dedicated GPU disabled, either because you know that part was flawed during production, perhaps it was faulty, or perhaps even just done deliberately due to product positioning, and there's a multitude of reasons as to the mechanics of why the decision is made. The point is that we will see some Ryzen CPUs with that iGPU disabled, but it is going to be an option for AMD to have that enabled on the mainstream stack for Zen 4. Now I just want to give credit to chipsandcheese.com for this one. Amazing website name, by the way. They published some documents that were leaked through the Gigabyte hack, and they did share a compatibility chart for AM5 processors. And as you can plainly see, it does list three types of AM5 processors, all based on Zen 4 microarchitecture with on-chip graphics. And again, you can see that some OPNs may not support GFX. So a very interesting move for AMD, as I'm sure you'll agree. You know, Zen 4 is cooking up to be really, really interesting. And obviously, I think we're all curious to see what the performance versus price 
and of course the improvements versus Zen 3 are going to be. You know, Zen 3, although some regarded it to be on a little bit on the expensive side, was regarded to be pretty damn impressive in terms of performance gains. So I'd say there's quite a lot of eyes and expectations resting on the shoulders of Zen 4 right about now. But as our final thing to wrap up for today, it is a short and sweet video, my friends, I'm afraid, but better than an RGT list day. What can I say? Anyway. This one is a few days old, but I find it interesting, so I just want to throw it in. There was a tweet from Greymon55, whose name I'm sure you are extremely familiar with by this point. And they had some things to share about RDNA 4. Yes, 4, not 3. So what did Greymon have to share with us this time around, I hear you ask? Well, according to him, we will see two nodes for the RDNA 4 series. And they said, quote, no, RDNA 4 is a full product line with a common architecture and RDNA 4 MCM will use 3NM plus 5NM. So they confirm a few interesting things in that tweet, as I'm sure you'll agree. The first is that we will still be seeing a MCM design for RDNA 4 and obviously the combination of 3NM plus 5NM. So what do they actually mean by this, I hear you ask? Well... Basically, we are referring to the I.O. which connects the chiplets and the graphics tiles themselves. So, for Navi 4X, this means 3NM graphics tiles and 5NM I.O. dies. And RDNA 3 is going to see 5 and 6NM processes, uh, respectively, for those. Now, obviously, RDNA 4 is a long, long way off. We are not expecting it to launch until at least late 2023 and obviously it could very well go into 2024 but still i thought this was interesting a little bit of a peek into the future roadmap of amd who if all rumors are to be believed have a hell of a monster on their hands when it comes to rdna3 but obviously we'll have to wait and see how true that ends up being anyway guys that's me done for this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time Bye bye